Welcome back, Odoers. My name is Jose Ignacio. Today, I've got another subcontracting video for you. This time, we're going to be taking a look at Dropship Subcontractor on Order Route, which allows us to supply a subcontractor with components by having a vendor dropship them. You see, sometimes we want to send a subcontractor components without even possessing them ourselves. In that type of situation, we can purchase them from a vendor and then have them shipped directly to the subcontractor. This benefits us because we don't have to worry about the cost of receiving and storing the components. Once the subcontractor receives everything they need, they manufacture the product as usual and ship it to us. So enough chit chat, let's jump in and see how it all works. So once again, we're going to be starting with configuration. Now I've already covered all of the general subcontracting settings in the basic subcontracting video. So be sure to watch that one if you haven't already. I'm also gonna make sure to link that below. So inside of this video, I'm just gonna go over the specific configuration settings to the dropship subcontractor on order route. So first off, we need to open up the bomb for the product of this example, which happens to be a bicycle. So to do that, I'm gonna head on over to the inventory application, and then we're gonna select the word products and products. Now remember, what did I say we're looking for? A bicycle, perfect. So once that we're inside of here, at the top of this page, we select the smart button for bill of materials. Perfect. Select the bicycle one. And there we are. Now, if you watch the basic subcontracting video, you'll know that we don't need to add components to a bomb for a product manufactured using that workflow. However, in this case, we are responsible for supplying the subcontractor with components and need to list them on the bomb. As you can see on our components tab over here, I've added the components needed to manufacture the bike, which happens to be a frame and a wheel, well, quantity two, because you need two wheels on a bike. Now let's go to the product page for, in our case, the frame. So we can actually select the internal link right there and takes us right there. So you'll notice inside of the purchase tab over here, we happen to have a vendor, Bike World, along with the price that they are selling this to us, which is $50, as well as a delivery lead time over here. Now this is the vendor that will send the components to our subcontractor once we purchase them. Next, let's click back over here to this inventory tab. So here inside of the routes, as you guessed it, I've selected the dropship subcontractor on order route. And that's what we need. With this route selected, every time we confirm a purchase order or PO for the bicycle over there, a request for quotation or RFQ for my acronym lovers will be generated to purchase the component from the vendor and then have it drop shipped to the subcontractor. All right. I've already configured our wheel component in the same way, so let's move on to the drop chip subcontractor workflow. Wow, that is a mouthful. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a purchase order to buy a bicycle from our subcontractor. So I'm actually going to go out of here and we're going to open up our handy dandy purchase application right there. And inside of here, we're gonna select on the word orders up at the top and you guessed it, purchase orders. And now we're gonna select new over here in the top left. Okay, so on the new purchase order, I'm going to add the bicycle's vendor, which happens to be bike friends. <laughs> it's kind of nice. So that goes inside of our vendor field. Then I need to add the bicycle down on the product tab. So add a product down here. We're going to select the bicycle. Okay, great. We're moving pretty fast right here. Everything looks good. So I'm going to confirm our order over here in the top. And then a couple of things have just happened. First, a receipt smart button has appeared up in the top center. And then second, an RFQ is generated to purchase the bicycle's components from the vendor. However, the RFQ is not linked to the PO by a smart button. This is one of the key differences between the dropship subcontractor on order and the resupply subcontractor on order routes. When a PO is confirmed for a product that uses the resupply subcontractor on order route, a resupply smart button appears automatically at the top of this page. However, when using dropship subcontractor on order, the smart button does not appear right away. Instead, the vendor RFQ must first be confirmed, which creates a dropship order to send the components from the vendor to the subcontractor. At that point, a resupply smart button appears on the subcontractor purchase order, which opens the dropship order when clicked. I know that's a bit confusing, so let me show you what I mean. So we're gonna start by clicking on orders once again. And then inside of here, remember it's an RFQ, so request for quotation right there. Now we need to select the one that was just created. So we'll usually find this as the main one up at the very top right there, perfect. Now, before we confirm it, let's take a look at a few things. First, we can see our component vendor, which happens to be Bike World. And that's already listed in the vendor field right there. 
In the deliver to field over here, you'll notice it says dropship subcontractor and bike friends is listed for the dropship address. It's kind of important because finally inside of our products tab, it lists all of our components, which happens to be the frame and the wheels. Altogether, this information tells us that Bike World will drop ship a frame and two wheels to Bike Friends. So let's confirm this right now by selecting right there. And let's see what happens when we do that. So what do you know? As I had just stated, a drop ship smart button appears at the top of the page. When we click the drop ship smart button over here, it opens up the drop ship order. So once that the vendor has sent the components to the subcontractor, all we need to do is click validate up here at the top of the order. Now the subcontractor has everything they need to start manufacturing the bicycle. Before we move on, there's just one more thing I want to show you on the dropship order. So up at the very top of the page, let's click on the source PO. And that's a little smart button right there. We can go back over here to our subcontractor PO. Remember how I said a resupply smart button would appear after we confirmed the vendor RFQ? Well, what do you know, O-doers? It's right there up at the top of the page. Clicking it takes us right back to the dropship order that we just came from. So once the subcontractor manufactures the bicycle and ships it back to us, we need to process the receipt to enter it into our inventory. To do so, I can either click on the receipt smart button, which happens to be at the top of the page, or the receive products. And remember, that will only happen after you have validated these types of things. And it's perfect. Either option opens up the receipt. Then I just have to click that validate button that you just saw me talk about and the bicycle will be entered. So once that we do all of that, it's all done. We're done. Today, I showed you how to configure a product that happens to use the dropship subcontractor on an order to route. You now know how to supply a subcontractor with components without ever having to handle them yourself. And that's pretty nifty, right? That's it for today. I'm going to see you next time.